we've started rolling um, on this podcast today uh, uh, in an unexpected way, which is perfect for me. Um, my guest right now is Leah Michelle, and Leah was just discussing how her mother ended up living with her for the year, basically from the moment she found out she was pregnant through the birth of her son. So I, I just thought it would, because by the way, there is no greater definition of the word good friend mm. than a mother who suits up and shows up in partnership with their daughter. And I just thought that was, you know, here we are talking about good friends, yeah. but to me, that's the greatest um, sort of designation of a good friend. Um, mm -hmm. So just tell me more about what that was like to have your mom there with you the whole oh, time. Oh man. Well, I think it was, it was her greatest dream come true for sure. Um, it was unexpected. And my mother and my mother's my second to Jonathan or not second to Jonathan, the equally Jonathan and my mother are my best friends. Mm -hmm. My, my mother is my best friend. And my mom and I have had a very interesting relationship throughout the years. I think that any mother and daughter relationship that sometimes can be a little too enmeshed can have its complications um, mm -hmm. as you start to spread your wings as an, as an adult. But any girlfriend that I'd spoken to who might have understood similar issues said, once you have a child or once you get pregnant, that relationship with your mother just amplifies more than you could even expect. And it, it did just that. I sort of um, understood my mother in a way I never had in my whole life mm -hmm. and how she could be there for me. I had an incredibly um, high risk pregnancy. I was on um, mandatory bed rest my entire first trimester. And I had a, wow. many scares in my second mm -hmm. trimester and how she rose to the occasion for me. It was just incredible. Is Jonathan here now? He oh. just arrived. So, <laughs> so Jonathan, you have now just entered the river. You've 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 Hello. jumped into a running river because Leah was starting to discuss the pandemic and the isolation with her mom. That her mom's been with her, and I realized that the best example of a good friend really is a mother who suits up, shows up, sticks by their child as they carry, deliver, and then care for a mm -hmm. child. And so we started recording. <laughs> well, it just felt like such an organic, perfect way to talk about it. And then um, she explained that really her mother and you, Jonathan Groff, are mm -hmm. her best friends. And now you're here. It's just, it's the way the Good Friend podcast Aww. rolls. We just Dad, roll with it. Can you see me, Dad? Oh, oh yeah. We can you see? Him. Can you see him? No, I, I saw him briefly. Um, yeah, we you should be able to see him. Dad, and we'll tell you about that. So I don't think he's ever called me Leah. And when he says Leah, it's like it's, it feels like I'm being scolded or something. Okay, like. so what? I'm sorry. What is your word for her, Jonathan? This is really funny because in it's it's in tune with the mother. As I'm jumping into the river on the in the mother discussion. Leah and I call each other mom and dad. It started <laughs> It started during spring awakening. Remy Zakin, one of the cast members, started calling us mom and dad because we, I guess, assumed the mother-father figures in certain ways with the with the cast, with the company. And then now for 15 years we're calling each other mom and dad. Okay. Well, I'm I'm hey, mom, mommy. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> my people, if you ever see, I will post something. I will say, well, mommy is very happy. Mommy of the mommy is talking to mom and dad. And by the way, this is another, obviously, when I conceived the idea of doing a podcast about friendship, um, something so crucial during this last very challenging time in all of our lives, I you know, obviously conceived it thinking, okay, well, I'll call Leah and I'll call mom. You know, you just start thinking of the friends that you have uh, that you would call. <laughs> and there were people I reached out to who turned me down, by the way. I'm just uh, saying. Here's what? my radio. I'm going to do my radio voice for a minute. Oh, I, I completely understand <laughs> that people would turn me down. And honestly, somebody said to me, well, why would they do it? 
Like who yeah. are you? Like really, who are you? To oh, be- I thought you meant why would they turn you down? That's how I. No, thought. no, no. The opposite, which is okay. simply these are busy people, and you know, it's that thing where I'm so enthusiastic and my heart is so open that I'm just like a puppy. I'm like. Yeah, I mean, Leah knows. I'm mm-hmm. I'm a bit of a cheerleader. So I'm like, come on, let's do it. Let's put on a show together. The, and, you know, I got a couple lovely sort of respectful declines. <laughs> and it was, a, it was really ego centering for me to go, oh, right, right. So anyway, the fact is there are some people that I have never met on this podcast and you are my first stranger. <laughs> and How I'm exciting. I'm honored. And I love that it, uh, our strange meeting happened in the way it has with Leah beginning to talk about being a new mom, her mom. I'm thrilled that the two of you have joined me. Oh my gosh. I've said for so long because Jamie, you texted me about Jonathan for a while. You know, when you watched Hamilton and always like tell your friend. Oh, Jonathan, were you in Hamilton, Jonathan? <laughs> oh, yes. That's were you? Show. Oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, well, we'll have to talk. We'll have to, yeah, briefly. Yeah, but maybe memorably. Or maybe we'll talk about that. Um, or maybe not. Um, for the listener, th- Leah will be playing the part of mom, mom and Jonathan will be playing the part of dad. And I will, I guess, be mommy. So oh my gosh. he's super confused. Sorry, mom. Continue. I just, I felt for a very long time that once you two meet, I know you will love each other. Like, I just have had such a strong feeling. I've said to Jonathan for so long, too. Like, you just have to meet JLC. And when you do, um, I just know that you two will also become good friends. Well, uh, hey, thank you. Yeah. By the way, for the for the person who's not watching, because this is a podcast, so you're listening, Leah just, I mean, mom just did the... Mom just did the thing where you hold your hands up to your face in that kind of posy way um, because she threw in the good friend, like, because she's a highly paid professional who knows that branding is everything. you got to brand and brand. So I am grateful for your branding moment. Um, so, Dad... Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get over it. you calling yeah. us mom and dad. This is so well, it's funny. just gonna just get used oh, to it, babe. It's so um, good, mommy. I love yeah, it, mommy. And yeah, well, we'll discuss the mommy of it all. Um, so, is it true that you two did meet on the spring awakenings of it all, or did you know each other before? No, we met at our audition for Spring Awakening. I had done previous workshops of the show prior to Jonathan joining the cast and they were auditioning uh, for, you know, his part. And um, here comes this boy from Lancaster, Pennsylvania with more gel in (laughs) hair than should be legal. Uh, It's crunch. It sounds like one of those (laughs) <laughs> the, the, like, um, book that my son plays with that like makes those sense. board yes right, right, right. <laughs> wow I love and you know how much I love that book I've been playing with with him with that book oh I you love did that. love the book yes. you remember. right and, with the crinkly paper that makes the crinkly sound of course yes. he, so he had a gelled cloth and um and I remember being in the audition with him and just taking a liking to Jonathan and I couldn't have the city mouse. He was the country mouse. And, um, but I just, that's also a book series, by the way. (laughs) And I just remember saying to myself, like, Oh, this poor sweet boy from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, like I'm going to help him and take him under my wing and fast forward 15 years. And he's in like the Matrix series, and he's been in every iconic hit for the past 10 years now. And Jonathan is just, uh, has rose to such incredible stardom that he so, so deserves. Right. But- and you fell to such horrible depths. And, you know, <laughs> just, it's such, you know what, honestly, I felt like this was my way of kind of pulling you up from, <laughs> our, the, from the bottom of your talent pool and say, come on, uh, mom. 
you can do it too. You, you know. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but just by the way, and um, for the listener, as you know, I am not. We're not here to sell things. Um, I'm I'm here to have a conversation, and you know, obviously, people's work is going to come up in it. But I need to tell you something. I don't know how. Mom, I saw a <laughs> clip or it must have been a YouTube thing or somebody sent me, you know, how do we get these things into our phones? Things arrive in your phone. You go, what? And you click on it. And it was you doing a monologue from Scream Queens. And for those who have not watched Scream Queens, which I guess is available on some platform, the comic snark that comes out of this woman it was so delightful to behold this just wickedly funny um kind of i'm not going to say kind of totally deranged human (laughs) um with this kind of weird I just it was a great performance, but it it was so funny because I hadn't watched it. Obviously, I don't sit around. You know, can you imagine Chris Guest with me going like, "Oh, honey, I'm just watching Scream Queen." <laughs> I just kind of like was bored, so I thought I'd watch my old work. And you, can only, you can only imagine how that would go in my house. Anyway, I was reminded of that. I don't even know where I. W- oh no, I know right because you were the the dregs of your career while well, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> or while dad has risen. Um, so you met and made a bond. Did did the bond, uh, I'm hearing a theme. I wonder if you guys are going to add on to it. That when you met, you knew. Did did it happen quickly or did it happen over a period of time? I, ha- I've, I really remember uh, that audition for Spring Awakening. And I remember Leah coming over and introducing herself. And I felt incredibly intimidated because Leah had done three Broadway shows, I think at that point, Les Mis, Ragtime, Fiddler. And I was very green and she was very experienced. And I remember uh, like we had to audition. We can get into in a minute too, just how intense the relationship, our relationship got because of the subject matter of Spring Awakening. But in this audition, we had to do a scene where we were I was beating her with a stick and she, I remember her at the audition before going in her saying, here's this pencil, use this pencil as the prop, but don't actually hit me with it. But when we're doing the scene, you can, she was sort of like helping me in, even at that stage at our, the very first day that we met sort of saying, you know, the director's going to want to see this, but he's not going to want to see you hit me. But she kind of was taking me by the hand and sort of teaching me the ropes from the very first day we met. And then The other first memory I have is after our first day of rehearsal, on the way out, her saying to me, just so you know, we're going to be lifelong friends forever. (gasps) I could cry right now. Oh, don't cry. (laughs) No, you know what? Do cry. By the way, this is a crying (laughs) site uh, website. This is our podcast website it is what is it it's a podcast <laughs> i'm new at this i'm a movie actress so i you know we're not on camera nobody will right. see you cry but they'll hear you she said that she to said, you. yeah she took my hand and she was like just so you know like we're gonna be we're gonna be friends forever and i remember feeling scared this is how i felt i was like i was like who is this person like how does she know and i felt very um green like she said it was like country mouse city mouse we were polar opposites i was closeted i was not out of the club i was gay i had a boyfriend who was my roommate leah was this very kind of extremely talented extremely professional extremely outgoing uh experienced young person and i was the total opposite Mm -hmm. i had some raw ability but i had no finesse and i had no idea how things worked uh and i was not comfortable even in a very sort of like important way with who I was. And we spent the next two years doing this incredibly intimate, sexual, emotional, deep show that where like the, the art of it, the acting of it was incredibly challenging and incredibly difficult. And then professionally, we 
were nominated for awards and the mm. show became really successful and we we rode this wave of success together so it was this work that was incredibly challenging and intimate combined with this sort of life-changing experience mm-hmm. that the show was for both of us and so we were getting this creative back I we did we do scenes where we're like crying looking at each other and making out with each other with tongue and dry humping each other and in in my in my best man speech at Leah's wedding I had done the math and it was like I forget how many thousands of times we had simulated sex together <laughs> it's a lot of times <laughs> and it, and all those things combined created created this lifelong bond yeah. that that we then like now has grown and developed and evolved. But from that first day of rehearsal, Leah, as usual, as she is known to do, saw it and called it. She's yeah. really good at doing that. Can I say something? Please. <laughs> So, Although I'm going to tell you one thing, I think this will be the only podcast in history, and we may win an award for it, <laughs> where my guests discuss simulating sex more than any other people in the history of show business uh, in a best man speech. I think, <laughs> I think in that very tiny category... We have one yes. now. I would dust off your, you know, fancy suit because I think we're going to that for most weird, intimate share. We yeah. haven't even started yet. Okay. Well, but I think we now know who the winner is. So I'm sorry, mom, continue. He also included in that speech that then when we went on to work on Glee together, our characters got married and had a baby together. So the simulated sex from Spring Awakening then grew into an actual baby on Glee, but we'll get into that. But I, I have to say, I have such a, um, I have such a specific memory with Jonathan Groff um, of us. It was very early into the rehearsal process of Spring Awakening, and and for my memory, our relationship it went from zero to a million very quickly. I mean, we were working on stage together intimately all night and then we would go to each other's houses I would go to his apartment the minute the show was over he would take a long time at the stage door with um signing autographs and stuff and I would I would go faster and meet him at home and wait for him at his apartment (laughs) and wait for him to just be with me after the show and sleep in his bed sometimes but I have this memory of a little of earlier, at the, just the beginning of our relationship. We went to the MoMA, I think, to see some Edward Monk exhibit that was there. And um, I, have a, I have a very strong personality that I, I think... No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other big... Surprise! Like, award-winning revelation. <laughs> I got it out of her. Wow! I'm I, so excited. That is not true. Mom, <laughs> it's an acquired taste. <laughs> um, I I remember early on. I knew that Jonathan was gay and was uh, in the closet, and I knew that his roommate was not just his roommate. I knew all these things. You know, I I lived in New York my whole life, and um, and I remember asking him at this museum. I was like, "So, do you have like a?" you know, girlfriend or boyfriend or something. And he was like, no, 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 no. I, I, I don't have a, a girlfriend. I don't have a girlfriend. I'm single, you know? And, and I was like, oh, well, you know, he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm in love with Jennifer Gardner and I love her. She's the love of my life. And that's like who I want to be with. And I was like, okay. And I know, and I knew in my mind, I was like, oh, wow, this is, um, this is deep. <laughs> and I remember in that moment feeling like I needed to protect him from how I could be. And mm-hmm. I felt in this immediate, like, I, I knew I heard myself in my head, just be like, you have to be good right now, Leah, you can't be brass and you can't be um, mm-hmm. hard. You, you know, you can't push and you can't be like, Oh, you don't like Jennifer Garner. Like, you know, of course yeah. you, like- you just want to, you want to be Jennifer Garner. I just <laughs> didn't know that distinction at that time. But I, I remember feeling this extreme, this in, in immediate protection 
to, to protect him, but also to check myself. And, um, and I never once asked him if mm -hmm. he was gay. I just, in that moment, I was like, this, I just have to respect him in this moment and go along with him and follow along with Jonathan and his comfort level. And, and I'll just sleep fine. Right. I'll sleep <laughs> but honestly, not to get weepy yet, although I have already cried. Um, <laughs> because of that moment of precious uh, truth and respect that you knew not to betray with your natural enthusiasm and your no bullshit way yeah. that you knew that he was figuring it out and whether or not you knew it the old adage is you don't know it until you know it mm -hmm. and that you had to give him that space mm -hmm. and that level of trust and respect for somebody else's process is honestly the greatest good friend mm. um, <laughs> attribute. Because obviously people are going to listen to this and be like thinking about their friends. And I think mm. recognizing something in someone and not force feeding it into them mm. and letting them, loving them through it is really oh. what happened, is you loved him through it. And at whatever point, which is none of my business, um, um, it might be some other investigative journalist's business who'd be like digging deep, wanting to know what that moment was. I'm not that person. Oh, but I'll tell you. <laughs> restaurante on the corner of 20th and 9th, and he sat me down. And he in Chelsea, appropriately, I guess, in the and end. Um, my roommate's not just my roommate. I'm gay, but I'm not going to go beyond like a gay pride float or anything like that. And then literally six months later, he was on an actual float. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Five years later, but close. Yes. It was, so it was so beautiful. And we were actually going that night to see Spring Awakening together for the first time after seeing the show. And it was a simple moment. and. It didn't have some long, dramatic, deep thing. It was like someone just said, you know, it was, it, I, I feel like at that point, our friendship was so beyond what Jonathan's sexual preferences. It, it just, at that point, it was like, you know, um, I knew, I know Jonathan, every cell, every bit of him. And, the, you know, it, so it was just, um, you know, I, I was so happy that he just in his life was there as far as telling me. Um, and you're and JLC slash mommy, you're <laughs> you're so right to say, like, I want to I want to back you up on that oh, thing. Thank of you. Leah really gave me the greatest gift for because that moment did happen. But it was two years later. Yeah. But you see, yeah. that's two the years, gift. Two that's years. Of, the gift. Yes. Such a gift. And we and we had we were doing this show where, you know, in the midst of myself trying to come to terms with who I was and and kind of compartmentalizing who I was in at, at in my apartment and being with my boyfriend, but us being completely closeted, and then coming to the theater, there it was it was so complex to fall in love with Leah every mm -hmm. night and, mm -hmm. and really feel love. I mean, and this is our, this is, this is like the complexity I think of relationships mm -hmm. as well, that I was also trying to kind of figure out and play out. And the show kind of gives any kid that ever does spring awakening, the opportunity to play out these feelings and emotions. It's the great gift of that show being created uh, is, is to give, you know, young adults, complex material mm -hmm. to work through what they're feeling. But I would, I, you know, Leah and I had real love for each other. And because of what we got to do in that show, we fell in love and we, we, we bonded and we connected and sort of like what you were saying, Leah, that it, like, by the time I came out to you, you knew me so intimately that it was almost like I knew that you knew 
that I knew, but we <laughs> had this thing that we were also experiencing with each other that was so profound and so mm -hmm. deep and so meaningful and so unique to us that there was, it was like, uh, the coming out wasn't like, um, and now I'm out and now we can be friends. Mm -hmm. It was like, mm -hmm. I came out, but it was an acknowledgement of, of the gift that she had given me for the last two years to explore and to be complicated and to not be defined by one thing, mm -hmm. which is like the best, the best gift a friend can ever give you is to let you be whoever you are at whatever moment you are and feel freedom to be multiple things at one time. Okay, just so you know, that's what we will call the pull quote for the like <laughs> that will be just so you know that'll be on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> what you just said, that distillation of what a friend is, will be the pull quote. I'm saying you could leave now. <laughs> if there's something I need, I don't already have. I know I'll get it from a good friend. If we'll be right back need, with more good friend have. after this I quick break. If I could be you, and you could be me, for just one hour, if you could find a way to get inside each other's mind, walk a mile in my shoes, walk a mile in my shoes, walk, walk a mile, mile in, in my, my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out, and for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org, brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Hey, Dad, how do airplanes fly? What's in this box? Is this tree good for climbing? How are babies made? What does this thing do? Kids are curious about everything, including guns. Talking to them about gun safety in your home is a good first step, but you can do more. Always keep your guns locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Safe gun storage saves lives. Learn how to make your home safer at nfamilyfire.org. That's nfamilyfire.org. Brought to you by N Family Fire, Brady and the Ad Council. I want to get back to being in my community group. I want to continue having a soccer season. So I can throw parties again. <laughs> so I can go to her parties. <laughs> It'd really be nice to dine in instead of getting delivery for a change. So I can feel safe and protected for myself and my students. We each have our own reason for why we're getting vaccinated against COVID-19. What will yours be? Visit GetVaccineAnswers.org for information on the COVID-19 vaccines. It's up to you. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Have you guys ever gotten in a big fight? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that separated, that gave you some distance from each other kind of fight, or just a fight that needed to get worked out in the moment? Well, okay, I, I, I want to just say one thing, Very, I want to talk about the fight. I want to say one thing, though, really quickly. And, you know, the thing is that we were just, what we were just talking about, too, and, you know, Jonathan and I have had so many... Um, lives together we were in spring awakening together and then because of jonathan they wrote glee for jonathan and i to play finn and rachel together jonathan ended up coming back on later in the show and playing another character we did that show together we've had lots of different lives together and um in my worst moment of life jonathan was by my side for months and he came to live with me and it, it's it's interesting because I, I don't even think of him being there for me in that moment. That was the biggest moment. As mm -hmm. much as I think of these little moments that we had together mm -hmm. and these, these little moments in time that could have changed so many different things. So the meaning of a friend, I'm actually just trying to get the quote here. I'm trying. <laughs> but what I'm saying is it's the big moment, but it's also those little things along the way in our friendship that even surpass the the, the being there for each other in the, in the biggest moments. Um, but back to the fights. <laughs> I was just curious. Um, no, I I've, loved it. I've, I've not gone, had, you know, this experience. I, I Well, I could tell you two of our, the only two fights we've ever had. And uh, by the way, I'm not looking to like break you guys up and have you get in some big fight. These are strangers <laughs> and they are taking from this, hopefully some insights about, Good friends, but you know, um, you can share in a general way <laughs> maybe your fight. I don't want to. No, like, I, I think that they were always 
me being dramatic and, and um, ridiculous. You know, I, I just, if I could be more like Jonathan with his kindness and patience, um, I, I, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people are like, how does he put up with you? And, and how does he deal with you? Because he's the most loving, kind, generous person who has more friends than, you know, the whole world. It's like, talk about the fights. Talk about the fight. Well, okay, Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I actually thought she was going to break into song there for a minute. I was, <laughs> I, I, and by the way, I did not invite you to on to sing. <laughs> I'll come running to see you again. <laughs> That's yes, yes. We had an argument because Jonathan was nominated for a Tony Award and I did not get a Tony Award nomination and I was very upset and it's the eternal debate amongst the two of us that he didn't call me that morning and he says he did call me and um, I was very upset because I just I just thought I would hear from him when I didn't get the nomination <laughs> even though um, <laughs> it's a huge incredible moment and morning for him of being nominated for his first Tony Award. I was very upset that he didn't call me, um, although he says that he did call me. This is and see, I'm starting. This is really going to break us up, JLC. <laughs> slash I know, and that's why I'm you're a little starting, nervous. You're starting that now. I'm starting to feel. <laughs> I'm starting to be like, wait a second, that's not what I said. I'm starting to get into that mm -hmm. mode, and this really is. It's so funny because ever, this comes up. I would say probably twice a year. This is the fight that will just always be the fight. Cool fight though, the day you were nominated for a Tony. At <laughs> <laughs> oh, Leah, so okay, the night before, I'm gonna take it back a little bit. I told you not to call me. The night, thank you. But the night before, but I think this is a cute detail. There was this, there's the actors, is it called the Actors Chapel that's across the street from the Eugene O'Neill Theater? Yes, it's on 49th between 8th and 9th. It's a beautiful church that is so wonderful and diverse and opens its doors to every. It's just, it's an amazing. And they would play, there's no business like show business every day at half hour. <laughs> yeah, before. And so every day we would hear the chimes of this church. So yeah, so this, so this particular night, it's before the Tonys were what, 22 years old? You're 21 years old. You might be 20, yeah. We're like, oh, we, you know, we want so badly to get nominated for the Tonys and, you know, and we take um, offerings in our costumes. So we, we would have this quick little break during the show and when we were not on stage and in our costumes, we would leave the theater while the show was going on and we would, we ran across the street to this church and I was like, we have to pray <laughs> nominated for Tony's <laughs> and I brought like five dollars and John brought 50 and then this and my whole life I'm like I just <laughs> God was disappointed in me I'll never forget him putting the money in the basket and I was like wait a second <laughs> and anyways he gave a lot of money and and Leah said to me that night, she was like, you know what? Because Leah loves to plan. And she loves, especially when things are like very heightened, you know, and, and it's a lot of emotions or whatever. The way mm -hmm. that she deals with that is by being like, okay, here's what's going to happen. If it goes this way, this is what I'm going to do. And if it goes this way, this is what I'm going to do. And she sort of like creates a schedule of how she'll handle whatever outcome. Is that correct? I would say that's kind of correct. Yes. And so that night she was like, if tomorrow morning when my mom and I wake, I think your mom was staying at your house that night. My brother was staying at my apartment, me and Cody's apartment that night. And she was like, I'm going to wake up. I'm going to watch it with my mom. And if I don't get a nomination, I'm just going to turn off my phone and I'm going to go shopping and just pretend like nothing happened and just away we go. And I was like, okay. So when, and, and, I, and I, what I remember, <laughs> it's so funny that we're walking through the details of this fight. And so I remember, <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, so I remember I was like, okay, she doesn't get nominated. The, the, the cue is, this is also my sort of 
level of ignorance at that age of, you know, the cue that I take is if it doesn't happen, she wants to for- pretend like it doesn't exist. Great. Got it. That's what I thought in my, in my mind. The discrepancy that I don't remember, but Leah remembers is that she called me mm-hmm. and left me a message to say, congratulations, you're nominated for a Tony. That's so great. On my side, I don't recall the voicemail. <laughs> Leah is like, I call, the next night is like, I called you and you didn't call me back. And I was like, I didn't get your voicemail. And that was where the, that is like the, the discrepancy, like the thing that we'll never know in the lore of our friendship. Make love in the show together multiple times. And here I am, like he's kissing me and I'm like, not looking at him. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes, I forgot about, oh my gosh, yes. That's the best part. Having like a fight, but still making love, but I wouldn't look at him. And it was a very short lived argument. And, uh, and, but again, I, I stand by the fact that as a, uh, you know, an iconic theater couple, you know, of performers, this is the most beautiful um, fight to ever have based on Tony nominations. I, 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 <laughs> I forgot. That's the best part is that I come into the theater the next night and I was like, hi Leah. And she was like, hmm. <laughs> just like not, <laughs> not talking to me. And then at intermission, I came into your dressing room and I burst into tears. Aww. And I was like, why are you looking at me? This should be a celebratory moment. We did this together. Da, da, da. And you were like, I called you and you never called me. And, da, da. and uh, then we were, it lasted a day. And, then and was the on. show nominated also? We won eight Tony Awards. Yes, you did. But you didn't, Leah. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and neither John. <laughs> That's what we call a good friend. See, I knew I needed to do this exactly. This is the moment. Wow, that's such a story. I just, you know, it's funny because we all have our way. This is apropos of nothing, obviously, and it has nothing to do with friendship. But we all have our way of responding to stress and anger and feelings. And Leah and I, I think, are very similar people. Hmm. And it's funny because when I'm mad, I can't look at somebody. Mm. And for me, it's that pretending they don't exist. And that for me, not looking at you means you're invisible. Mm. Like I'm, I am everything. I'm tactile and I'm, I, I'm handsy and I'm, but like all of my senses are like super attuned. But when I'm angry, because I can't use my words, mm. what happens is I shut down shutting down is to say, you don't exist. I will pretend, and it's a little, it's, it's, I will pretend that I'm here alone. And, you know, I'll reach by, I mean, obviously we're talking about my husband. (laughs) Who else am I in relationship with for 36 years? Oh, he's got to you. He, um, yeah, I know. Married, 36 just nutty McNutty. And can Amazing. we have a moment of appreciation for Jamie Lee Curtis at the Golden Globes strutting in in that yellow dress? I think I saw um, someone posted something on Instagram. If I could have the confidence of Jamie mm-hmm. Lee Curtis walking on the stage one minute in my life, then things would be better. And I just, I've never been more proud to be your friend or to mm-hmm. just Sweet know you, Jamie, you. in that moment. I mean, I was staring at your breast the whole time <laughs> like oh my god I, know. <laughs> I wanted to lay my head on me. yes okay lay. um well the but- really good news is mommy mommy yeah there was a mommy right there uh yeah thank you that's very sweet of you um yes i was talking about my husband and obviously i you know i just i don't do well with that and that's why i ask about friend fights because Mm -hmm. you know when you're when you're on a podcast talking about good friendship it 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 has to come up because people can't be like oh yeah we've never had a disagreement and you just go really how is that possible and so uh, the older I get and the more sober I am and all of a sudden 
the feelings that um, used to scare the heck out of me and make me feel like if I ever had feelings that it would kill me. And mm. I now know that isn't the case. Mm. So for me, it's just interesting because of of your friendship and and wondering that's just an amazing, amazing story. And I, I feel like I, one of the things that I learned too about Leah in that moment that that I hold on to is that this this quality of planning as the friend of the person that plans, understanding that the plan, the planning is a therapeutic way to deal with stress and to deal with uh, emotion. And it's kind of, can be an incredibly healthy and productive way to handle whatever uncertainty is happening in the moment. It does not mean that these plans are the plans that will happen when the next day comes. That, that But this was such a good lesson to learn of like, okay, we're planning something out for ourselves right now but mm -hmm. this may not be the but when the moment actually comes the moment itself may require exactly what the plan was or mm -hmm. it may require something completely different and so having perspective and sort of malleability in that in that uh plan is something that i then always took with me in real in in every relationship after that mm -hmm. but i think that also like the 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 an interesting thing that happened in our friendship that I think was essential is we were together simulating sex so close, <laughs> like sweating on each other. <laughs> like, like we would, we, we like, like if I can say just to speak one more time about this period of spring awakening, we would like, like, like wrestle, we would bully, like, like we would like pin each other down and like physical with each other. And People like, were very confused by yes. our, because it was, I'm sorry to interrupt you, John. Uh, mm -hmm. It was very um, physical. Like we were, we were so, um, I don't, I mean, you're, you're way more eloquent than I am. Please keep speaking. No, no. And I remember like, I remember Naya on what, when we were like in rehearsal one day during Glee, she was like, there's no way the two of you are <laughs> the way that like you right, hold sure. her ass or whatever. We just had this like, but we weren't, but we, but we, but we had simulated. It was the most like incestuous, close, like it was so raw that I really think that one of the one great moment of transition that happened sort of organically kind of um when i think back in retrospect is we had some distance and it was sort of like being in college or something together mm -hmm. and then being apart and we had this kind of moment where leah moved to la and i was staying in new york and it was really in retrospect now it wasn't even occurring to me in the moment but it was so good for our friendship because we were so, we were almost too close with the, the, the level of closeness couldn't sustain relationships. And so when we had this physical distance that sort of just happened because of your career and Glee and all of that, it created space that I think is really important in, in all relationships, but, and perspective, it helped us, um, it helped our relationship mature a lot too, because, you know, like Jonathan said, we, we had this very college-like experience in Spring Awakening where we were so, so intertwined morning, noon, and night, working together, going home with each other, spending the days together. Our families became good friends. We would spend weekends together, days off, everything. And then we had this distance and we um, grew up and Jonathan's career you know, blew up and, and, and my career, you know, blew up and it was like, uh, uh, you know, but the distance forced us to maintain that level of friendship. And I think that that's also when you really know who is meant to stay in your life. It's like when life changes and when there's distance, do you keep, you know, in contact with the part, do you, do you keep that level? We, we did, and it helped us kind of mature. Um, but it also forced us to maintain the relationship with all these other things happening, you know, in, in life. And then our relationship went from this 
So I can kind of compare it when we were in Spring Awakening. It is like when two people, are young people fall in love. And it's like that lust, like just that, like mm-hmm. I am upset. It was mm-hmm. deeper than lust, um, but it was like that so obsessive, I love you. And then when we were on Glee together, and then, you know, especially when like Corey passed, um, our friendship became that grounded two soulmates, just that, that like a real beyond the wrestling and the, you know, it, it just turned into something that is lifelong. Not that it wasn't in Spring Awakening, but it took on a level of maturity and deepness and just like I can now go, you know, and see him when I see him or whatever. And it's like, there is a connection to Jonathan that is, um, it will never go away now. It, it just became like cemented. If there's something I need, I don't already have. We'll be right back with more Good Friend after this quick break, so stick around. Hey guys, this is Leah Lamar and I'm joined by my co-host Teddy Mellencamp and we have an amazing podcast called Real Time Crime. Are you obsessed with solving crimes? Are you a sleuth for the truth with a self-awarded PhD in unsolved mysteries? Do you believe you should be giving an FYI to the FBI? Do the detectives label it a cold case while you're just getting warmed up? Then you need to join us, Leah Lamar and Teddy Mellencamp, on the Real Time Crime Podcast, where each episode will discuss all the details of a high-profile case and uncover the 411 of the 911. You can't solve the crime if you don't listen in real time. Listen to Real Time Crime on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. It's the coldest of cold cases. Five women murdered and mutilated in Victorian London. But trust me, everything you think you know about Jack the Ripper and his victims is wrong. I'm historian Hallie Rubenhold, and when I went back into the records, it became clear that the real story of those murdered women is richer and far more disturbing than we'd ever been told. Listen to Bad Women, The Ripper Retold, on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. I asked what kind of family she wanted. She said, a family like yours. Learn more about adopting a teen at AdoptUSKids.org. You can't imagine the reward. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. You know, all of the planning that you and, by the way, and I share, (laughs) but I, you know, that's part of in friendships. Um, I'm not great at telling people what I feel about. I struggle, honestly, with with words about it. Uh, I, I find... Writing letters very challenging. I have it's like a mm. weird thing with my mother. My mother used to write letters, but I didn't believe them, <laughs> mm, and so wow. it felt like words are cheap and actions speak louder. Actions speak louder, and so I am a woman of action. Um, and my hope is that my action speaks louder than the words that I could possibly put together. Um, and at the same time, of all of that planning. Uh, life happens. And uh, there's a book, and I've mentioned it on this podcast before, and but it's important to me. It's a book called Special Topics in Calamity Physics, which is a novel by Marisha Pessel. It's just a terrific novel, mystery novel, if you're looking for a great book. But in the middle of it, she talks, the main character talks about, you know, life is supposed to be Um, what you plan, you know, you, you, where you go to school, what happens, your first job, da, 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 and da, da, and then you meet and you do spring awake. And like, that's how it's supposed to go. And she says, it isn't, you know, she says, life hinges on a couple seconds you never see coming. Mm. And what you decide and do in those seconds determines everything from then on and you won't know what you're going to do until you're there. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I read that and then thought back to my life and the very hard things, really hard, horrible things that have happened that I never saw coming. 
but that transformed my life because of the way I responded to them. And that's kind of what you were just saying, Mom, was <laughs> that moment for you of such grief. And so, I mean, addicts, it's hard not to, you know, understand that they're on a on a dangerous path, let's say. But no matter what, you still don't see it coming. And, you know, I knew you guys were friends, and obviously that takes it from, as you said, the sort of wrestling kind of energy together mm. and really becomes so human. It's just such a human experience to go through together. And, um, you know, the way you spoke of it, uh, Mom, was really very moving. Um, that's why it popped in my head. Um, and then, of course, children. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, love, just, I hey. love the woman who's planning this and that. And I just kept sitting back here like, yeah, you just had a kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I see everything is white. Okay, wait, wait. I love all my friends who have children and, oh. and their palettes are, you know, kind of white and ecru. And I love it. And I cannot wait for the day that they bring home a Fisher Price plastic box that's bright yellow, red, green, and that they drag it in going, Mommy, Mommy, look what I got. I love my new toy. I love my new toy. I love my new toy. And you're just shaking because it's so not <laughs> going to work. Yeah. No, I'm there already. I mean, yeah. literally, my, like, I, my, the pediatrician was like, you should just clean the baby at the beginning of the feeding and the end of the feeding. You don't have to clean him <laughs> throughout the meal. And I was like, okay. <laughs> when you have a 15-year-long friendship now, you go through um, breakups, loss, success. Um, I got married. Jonathan was there for my wedding. Uh, I never thought I would have a pregnancy that he wasn't by my side for the entire time, but because of, of COVID, we were separated. Um, but then, you know, the minute that I was able to get to, uh, the East coast and see Jonathan, be quarantined, got multiple tests and were able to see each other. And I hadn't seen John in probably a year. The last time I saw Jonathan was we had just filmed the Jimmy Fallon show together. We went out for dinner that night, had many a cocktail together. And I woke up the next morning and took a pregnancy test and found out I was pregnant. Mm. I hadn't seen him for an entire year. And he walked in the door of the nursery and I was breastfeeding my son. Mm. And it was so weird because Jonathan has seen me without clothes on more times maybe than my husband. Um, and, and like, I just remember feeling like uncomfortable and like a little nervous. Um, and also like, like, when did we grow up? When did it happen? And, um, and it was, uh, it was, we, I have these sort of like these moments that flash in front of my eyes with Jonathan and I, I would say like the first time we met and winning the Tony's for spring awakening. And this, uh, you know, I ended up visiting him in Los Angeles, um, which is a wild story of fate. And that's how I met Ryan Murphy. And that's how I, Glee was created. So I have these flashes of moments in time in our relationship. And then that moment of him walking in with me breastfeeding, mm. even I was like, this is my son. And like, it was so intense. It was really intense, filled with a lot of, of emotions that I'm still just processing. Yeah, of course you are. And do you remember that moment, Jonathan? Or dad? I cried. Yeah, I cried. I just walked in and felt overcome with emotion seeing her. And, and then I sat on the floor at your feet and just was like, trying to compute. I felt similarly, the only other time I felt this way was with my brother when he had his first child, feeling like, okay, you're a parent, you're a parent, mm -hmm. you're a parent. This is, 
in on one hand feels like the most natural and and Leah is such a um mom's mom <laughs> she's such a mom uh has always been I always knew that when she had a kid and has, uh, since the day I met you has always talked about wanting a child mama who bore me was the first song she sings at spring awakening it was like obviously always at the front of every conversation we had throughout the years what it would be like this guy you're dating, but is he the father of your child? You know, there's always the conversation about the kids and the family and will this be the dad? Will this be the dad? You know, we're kind of looking mm-hmm. for like the real dad, mm-hmm. not even necessarily the husband, but like, who's the dad? Mm-hmm. Because the, it's always been a means to an end for the kid. And now here is the, is the child. And so it feels natural. And yet it feels so strange to compute. Like everything is different. Everything is different. Like everything now is, is as it, it makes so much sense. And you really feel like before this and after this, like as many things as we experience highs and lows and grief and success, this to me is like, even like wedding. Yes. But it's like, boom, all of a sudden there is a, there is a human being in the room. And now to me, that's at least what I felt like. Now everything is different. Yeah. It was, of course, many different evolutions. And this is now the whole beginning of an entirely new, an entirely new experience. And I feel like so excited to be the gay uncle of <laughs> ever. Well, and I spoke to my friend Naomi Foner yesterday, and she is the parent of Maggie and Jake Gyllenhaal. And I am the non-gay godmother <laughs> of um of her kids even though it's not an official god parent position but apparently it is according to the internet um you know i believe i believe everything uh, yeah, yeah. that i read on the internet um but <laughs> the reason i bring it up is that the, the reason i brought that up is because i've become friends with maggie and jake mm. separate and so what I was thinking of is ah, a yeah. possibility for you that you will actually be able to be a good friend to ever to ever in your own relationship, not just in the connect the dot mm-hmm. back to to mom. And I hope for you that you get that because the friendships I have made now as an adult with the adult children of my friends separate from their parent has been really uh, uh, an added, yeah. this is the whole idea, spring awakening. We want <laughs> spring is about renewal and growth and change and death and life. And um, that is what you hope. I will tell you, it's such a wonderful way of looking at a friendship. And I am beyond grateful to the two of you. And I'm not, and I do not want. But it's funny because um, I, you know, this show was born from a song. I don't know if you had a chance to listen to the song. It's on your email. Loved it. So good. That is literally the birth of this show was me hearing that song going, oh. Um, And I loved, I love her anyway, have always. Um, And Uh, You know, I've been listening to, you know, I do listen to show tunes and Mm -hmm. I, you know, there are so many songs about friendship and I was listening. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard it recently and if you haven't, I'm going to urge everybody to listen to it. Easy to be hard from here. Lynn Kellogg. Jonathan. Jonathan knows. (laughs) Okay. I'm, I'm obsessed with it, you know, because how can they ignore their friends? Easy. I mean, I just, I sob. And I've been listening to it on repeat doing these podcasts and, you know, at home, I've just, so it's funny because here I have two people and just so you know, I can't sing. Um, I can do many things. I could build a house. I, if you want me to build a house, I could build a house. I can do almost anything. I never thought I would do any of the things I do ever. And I do them all and I do them well. And that's just my gift. I just sort of say, oh, you need that? Okay, I can do that. And boom, we're doing it. We're doing this right now. Never in a billion years would I have thought of doing this. And now I'm doing it. 
but the one thing I cannot do is sing. And, <laughs> I, I, and, and I, I'm telling you, I cannot sing. So the idea that I am talking to the two of you, two people who both I admire as friends, I admire for your art, man. I mean, I just, it's such a gift. Thank you so much for doing this. You've, you've made a beautiful episode of the Good Friend Podcast. And anybody listening, stay safe. God bless you. And uh, whatever. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for having us. <laughs>